Hey folks, it's Dakota Cohen here. In this video, I'm gonna be going over some of the specific design elements of my favorite birdhouse design that we use on our farm here. Uh, I have done another video where I've, com I've compared this birdhouse design to uh, one of the other ones that we've used on the farm here. Um, and uh, if you wanna check that out before you watch this video, it might be a good idea, because uh, I'm not gonna be doing a comparison. I'm just gonna be specifically talking about how to build this one in the kind of most you know cost effective um you know simple way possible uh but yeah if you want to watch that video it's in the description box below uh so yeah let's let's dive into it here the the uh, i actually didn't design this birdhouse uh it was a couple two or three years ago i put an ad out on our kind of kijiji which is like our craigslist here in canada uh looking for somebody to build me 200 uh, you know really cheap birdhouses and i had this old kind of re retired guy uh, contact me and uh, he he, uh, he built me these guys for for ten dollars a piece which is just a <laughs> a heck of a deal I don't even know if you paid for his materials with that uh, and he did a really really good job they've really stood up well over the last couple years we, uh, we've had almost a hundred percent occupancy in uh, in the birdhouses uh, there are a few things that I would like to to change if, if I was gonna be building them myself and so, um, yeah, I just, I just want to go through that today and give you guys some specific measurements and, and, um, uh, and tips so that you can, you can build them on your own place. So to start out with, um, the, the, the best design aspect of this birdhouse is that you don't need a table saw to build it. Uh, and, and, and the reason for that is even though you've got all these different, um, you know, sized pieces in this birdhouse, it's all just regular dimensional lumber. So for example, the roof, is, is a one by eight. The, the two sides are a one by six and the, the back and the front is a one by four and the bottom is also a one by four. And so all you need is a, uh, basically a, a chop saw or a miter saw. You don't, you, don't, you don't need to do any miters, it's just, just straight, straight cuts. And, uh, and so you, you can just go and buy you know, eight, 10, 12 foot lengths of, of one by eight, one by six and one by four and you just cut them to length and then you just either nail or screw it together um, you know depending on on which piece you're gonna do which I'll, I'll talk about that and that's it so it's like it's a uh, you know if you're making these out of plywood or uh, you know really any other kind of material you're gonna need a table saw which a lot of people don't have um, and you, you, you know to do it safely you, you kind of need two people and and so with with this design I think it's it's uh, it's much much cheaper and much faster to build. I also don't like plywood. Uh, it, it, I, uh, the other birdhouses that we have, they even the exterior grade stuff, it tends to delaminate, um, meaning the plies kind of spread apart uh, and they just don't seem to weather as well. You know, I've actually, I've seen birdhouses very similar to this design, you know, on fence posts around our, our county here that must be 50 or 60 years old. Like they're just, they, they, they stand out really, really well. So that's the first thing is, is by building it out of just just regular dimensional lumber. All you gotta do is is cut it to length, and you don't need a table saw to to, to rip that. Um, now the um, the one thing that I, I would change is that uh, this guy he um, uh, he made it a little bit too more complicated than it needed to be. So for example, um, the the back of the of the the birdhouse here um, runs out past the roof. And so he had to notch out this little piece on the back here um, in order for that to work. And then he had to silicone that, but you know, as you can see here, the, the silicone has, has broken apart and it's just a, it's a vector for water to get in. And it, it adds, it would add another, you know, three or four, probably a couple minutes to, um, to each birdhouse having to make that dinky little cut. It's also um, you know, not an easy cut to make and, and it's, it's unnecessary. So what I would do is I would just, you know, keep this back uh, down uh, flush to the roof and just push the roof back so that the the one by eight roof uh, comes right over the top and, and it's and it's flush. So that that eliminates that right right there. Uh, the other piece that uh, I, I think is unnecessary is he has the roof on a on a on a slant. Um, so, so meaning he's actually um, you know mitered. Uh, the, the the two sides here, the one by six sides, and uh, you know it, it looks like it's only you know uh, uh, you know a, a ten degree you know miter or something like that. So it's it's not a it's not a, a steep cut, but it's it's not necessary. I mean, you, if you're putting these on on fence posts, they, they're never going to be level. And even if it was perfectly level, 
you've only got a, you know, the roof is gonna cup and it's, it's gonna, water is gonna run off of it. So make it simpler, just do square cuts. Don't, don't do the miter on the, the two one by six sides here. Just make them uh, square. And, and that'll make everything a lot simpler for, uh, for when you're building. Now, the other piece that I think um, he could have made a lot simpler is, uh, is the bottom uh, of this birdhouse here. He made like a, um, an octagon shape, which again is, is, is unnecessary. Um, you know, this is where for me, I would have just used a one by four on the bottom and just spaced it uh, basically even within the, the two by six sides. So it, it's the same dimension as the, the back and the front, just the one by four, but um, you, you basically cut it by, you know, it'll be uh, whatever it is, three and a half or whatever the, the, the dimension of your, your, um, your one by four is, cut that into a square and then just put that in the bottom here and there'll be a little gap in the front and the back and, and that's enough just for, for air circulation to get through. You don't need to get all, all fancy with this, with this octagon piece here. It's, 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 it has, serves no function. All, um, all we need is just a little bit of a gap so that if water does get in, it can drain out. And it also allows a little bit of, of circulation. So with that, um, I mean, I think this birdhouse could be built in, um, you know, in really quick time. I mean, there's, there's literally just uh, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six pieces um, on a on a chop saw. And if you if you set up uh, like what I was what I would do if I was going to build a bunch of these, and I would figure out what all my measurements were, and I would just set up a um, a, a, a board stop, um, you know, on my workbench or whatever, or on my on my my saw, so that I could literally just take you know a, a ten foot or a twelve foot, uh, you know, one by material, whatever it is. So say for example the the roof here is uh, it's eight inches uh it's 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 eight inches wide and it's just a it's a you know seven and a quarter um uh, uh wide by eight inches long um, it's seven and a quarter that's what that's what a dimensional one by six is it's just stock so <clears throat> basically uh, i want these to be eight inch cuts i set my my saw stop at you know eight inches and i just have my you know my my uh, uh board running long on this end and i just push it through eight inch piece eight inch piece, eight inch piece. And I just cut all my eight inch pieces, put those in a, in a stop. The next thing I do is my, I, is I cut my sides. And so for this guy, you know, I would just make it, he's got it, you know, 10 and a half um, for, the, for the side pieces on the short end um, and, you know, 11 inches on the back. Um, I think, you know, anywhere in there, whatever's gonna work out best for, for the dimensional lumber you have. Um, so probably like an 11 inch piece uh, is probably gonna work good because you know, your, your saw blade is going to take up about an eighth of an inch. And so if you're buying, you know, eight foot lengths, um, if you cut it at 11 inches, by the time you get to the end, you're, it's, you're going to get all, you know, full 11 inch pieces. Whereas if you made it 12 inches, you're going to get to the end and one of those is going to be short and then it's not going to work um, for, your, uh, uh, for your assembly stuff later on. So, you know, make it less than 11 inches tall on the sides and you got two pieces of those. Same thing, set your, your, your board. Uh, your, your stop for your board at 11 inches from the saw blade, cut them all out, they're all identical. You don't have to measure, there's, you don't even need to measure it. You just, uh, once you get the first cut set. So you do two of those for each one. Then you do the, the front and the back. And, and because, we're, uh, because we are not uh, mitering this, the sides here, the, the front and back are now the same dimension versus um, the, the way they are now, they're, they're actually different dimensions. Um, and so, the you know these two pieces would be uh well they'd be 11 inches as well same as your side pieces right because you want it to be totally it's just a rectangle box uh so you, you cut all those out to 11 inches too your one by fours and uh and then the next piece is your your bottom there uh and that, that, again that'll be whatever dimension you know typically it's it's um well this one actually is four inches that's weird typically they're um they're three and a half but um uh anyways so that, just measure whatever the width your one by four front and back are and then cut the, the the length of your bottom piece to that and then it'll sit kind of in, in between the, the the one by six side it'll give you a little bit of a space you know kind of a uh, you know uh, half inch space um, uh, front and back and then uh, and then you're good to go so it's all straight cuts there's no there's no miters there's no uh, nothing complicated and, uh, and you've got uh, all your pieces are cut and then you can just go into assembly. And so then for assembly, uh, again, this, the way this guy did it was really simple. Um, nothing is glued, it's all just nailed. Um, 
and uh and they've, they've held up really well like we have these out in our pastures where our cows are rubbing on them and stuff and i have yet to have one of these fall apart on me so um i think he did a really great job uh, basically it looks like he just used um you know kind of inch and a half uh like ring nails for the uh, so basically he put four nails in the top to hold the roof down and then he put um uh, you know, basically three nails in the sides, kind of two on the back, one on the bottom for the nails, um, and that, that holds the uh, on either side. And then he just put two screws, which he probably would have pre-drilled these um, uh, into the uh, into the side here. And then the screws allow the this. Sorry about that squeak. Uh, they allow this thing to uh, to to pivot a little bit better. Um, and, uh, and so that it, it, uh, um, everything works out fine. And actually come to think of it, you are going to want to make sure that your, um, your front and back one by four is actually a little bit less than the side length. So see if this was 11, you might want to make the front and the back, uh, say 10 and a half, because for one reason, if it's tight, you won't be able to, it, it'll be, it, it'll, it'll, won't be able to tip back, but also you want to have a little bit of an air gap at the top, um, as well so that you know air can kind of come up and, and vent out all the way around and um uh and you'll be good that way uh and so with with that that's that's really the you know it's a really simple simple design um the uh one other thing that that i i might um shift and this is kind of just depending on where you're going to be mounting these guys so <clears throat> When um, on, on fence posts, I found myself because I, I kind of wanted the, these birdhouses to be, um, uh, you know, up a little bit higher on the fence posts um, for, for myself. And so it, it would have been nice to actually have the bottom uh, of this one by four kind of extend down so that I could, I could have that actually above the fence post. And then it's really easy to, for me to screw, you know, two or three screws into the, the bottom kind of piece here. Um, but uh, on for this example here where i've got it screwed onto this this uh you know rough one by six fence here it works really good uh, i just open the door up i put my two screws in to the back piece that mounts it on it's really really solid and uh and simple to go so de depending on where you're mounting these you might want to leave the, the back piece run long on the bottom but you don't want to have it run up the top because then you have to cut this little silly piece out of uh of the top here uh, I guess one other thing I, I will talk about is what kind of finishing material uh, like what, do you want to do you want to paint it do you want to use linseed oil uh, there's a, another product that we've used before called lifetime um, it, in our climate here in, in central Alberta we're quite dry and so we don't get a lot of rain and and it's it, so it, it wasn't really I don't think it's worth my time to to paint these guys and, and put a lot of preservatives on them um, but uh you know if if i was uh, say you are in a higher moisture climate the the way that i would probably do it to, to make it if you're doing hundreds of these things if, if you're doing it you know if it's a, if your kids are doing it and it's a project yeah by all means just keep them busy for as long as possible <laughs> and you know get them to paint everything two or three coats it'll keep them out of your hair for as long as you can but if you're trying to scale this up and just get her done quick um i would actually get like a like a spray gun uh, not like the spray cans, but actually like a spray gun where you can, you know, have these guys kind of all laid out in a strip and just like, you know, spray them just really rough. Um, and then you may, you know, let them dry for a day, turn them over, spray the backs and, uh, and kind of get all the corners and just, just get it covered with some kind of a, of a coat paint after you've built it. And, and that way they're, they're covered. You could also do the same thing with linseed oil or some kind of a varnish. Or there's another product that, uh, that we've used called Lifetime. Uh, it is a it's a it's a kind of a mineral uh, additive that you mix with water and you just kind of use um, like we don't use herbicides in the farm here but uh, we buy like the herbicide sprayers the things that you pump up and and we put this this uh, lifetime mineral additive into just a bit of water and it creates this this fine mist and you can just go in and spray it on you know any regular wood and it supposedly acts like a preservative we've used it a lot on our house to to um, where uh, and basically what it does is it 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 turns um, uh, wood into kind of, it makes it look like cedar basically. And it does act like a preservative. It's really inexpensive. That could be something else that you've done. But I guess it, for my context, um, I, I, haven't, I haven't noticed, um, you know, I, I don't think it's gonna be worth it for us because we're so dry here. But if you were in a wetter climate, you may wanna put some kind of preservative. 
And there's also one other thing that I, I forgot about that's probably the most important aspect of, of the design changes that, I, that, that need to be made to these, this particular design. And, and I didn't realize this when we first bought these, but um, this back door um, is um, uh, uh, the dimensional lumber because it's planed, uh, particularly like now it's, it's quite rough, but um, the, because it's been out, out in the weather for a while, but when it's first planed, it can have like a really waxy, slippery coating on it. Um, and, um, and certain birds, in particular uh, tree swallows, uh, when they when they fly into this hole to to, to you know check out to see if, if it's going to be a good nesting spot box, um, they can actually get trapped inside because the distance from the, the bottom to the hole, which is actually a, a good distance for birds like tree swallows and bluebirds and stuff, um, the they can't climb up this back side with their with their their little claws because it's so rough. And so you do need to make some kind of, of you know, either a saw kerf or what I did is I just took a, a chisel because um, I actually, what I put all the, I put a hundred of these things or 200 of these things up and, and then, and then I started going around checking them like the week after and I was finding dead birds in these birdhouses and it was really terrible. And sometimes there'd be, you know, two, two dead birds in a birdhouse where the, you know, the, the male would go in to check it out. He couldn't get out. The female would go in and she would die too. And so it was really, really sad. And, and I, I, I want to make sure everybody, um, nobody makes that mistake as well. And so what I started to do, I had to do is, um, is I went around with, with um, basically, uh, like I said, like a chisel and I just scored the back side here, um, you know, to make it rough. And it, it took a lot of time because I was doing it after the fact and, and all these birdhouses are spaced 200 feet apart. But um, th that's something that, you'd, that you're gonna want to do beforehand and and probably the fastest way is when the when the when you got your one by four that's a set aside for your front all laid out just as one long you know eight foot board or whatever um just go along that board and just score the whole thing with with a chisel you you can do saw curves um and and maybe that'll be faster it, it will give a bit more grip but uh i think a chisel is is probably good enough or you could make some kind of a uh, of a jig where you've got you know a um, a board with like four nails or four screws in it that you can kind of hold and like drag and you can make, you know, you know, you can do like a six inch piece at once or something like that. Um, you guys can get creative, but it's really, really important. If you're going to be using dimensional lumber um, for these birdhouses, uh, you have to make sure that the door is rough because certain birds will, it's, you're, it's a death sentence for them when they, when they crawl in. And since I've done that, I haven't had a single bird die in these birdhouses. Um, I guess one other thing, I'll talk about is the dimension of the the hole and so the, the like for us uh, these are uh, an inch and, uh, and nine um, nine sixteenths and uh, um, and that that tends to work really well for our target species which is kind of bluebirds uh, but it also works really well for tree swallows um, and and wrens uh, but it's all it's small enough that the those little bugger sparrows <laughs> we, they don't need any more encouragement on our farm because uh, they're just kind of freeloaders. They don't. They just you know eat eat uh, eat grain and stuff. They don't eat a lot of pests. Um, but our target species, like I said, are, are like the wrens, the the tree swallows, and uh, and bluebirds. Um, that's a really good size for all those birds. So we use uh, inch and nine sixteenths for the for the diameter of the hole. And um, um, but uh, depending on on what your target species are, you might want to change that. Uh, that, that hole and, and make sure that it's you know small or big enough for, for that bird to get in without allowing other birds that you don't want access to be able to get into your your birdhouse here um, and the, the other thing to consider is is like the dimensions of this stuff um, you know and, and using the dimensional lumber the one by six the one by four and the one by eights uh, it works great for those target species that I mentioned if you're trying to get like a bigger bird in uh, it might not work for you so uh, you know, do do check that out you know uh, do some rough, rough research. There's lots of great research papers on on uh, you know what what size of hole and what dimensions and you know even even how far to put the hole up um, the, the the side of the nest box to to really make it um, ideal for the kind of birds that you want. Um, but you know for me, the like this hole is basically positioned, you know uh, you know basically seven inches or I guess the center of the hole would be you know seven and a half inches up from the bottom. 
and uh, and it's inch and nine sixteenths, and it works really great for us. But you might be able to tweak that, um, you know, moving it up or down, shrinking the box, making it smaller, um, if you want to favor a pre one particular species over another. So. Uh, I, I hope this, uh, um, this kind of detailed video going over the, the dimensions helps you guys to uh, uh, you know, build a whole bunch of these birdhouses for your, your, your property. Uh, we have, I, I hope you can notice you know, in the background here all the, the bird song. Like we're, we're, we're just, you know, there's still snow on the ground uh, around us here, but we're already getting birds coming back. We've already, I've already seen wrens building. Uh, 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 birdhouses in here, the tree swallows are gonna be back any day. Hopefully, the bluebirds as well. So it it um, I mean it's just it it makes your property a lot more beautiful to be around, but it's also very functional. A lot of these these uh, birds will eat, you know, thousands if not tens of thousands of, of pest species like grasshoppers and mosquitoes and and you know blowflies and and uh, um, uh, you know warbles and things like that. Pests that are preying on your you know your animals or your crops. Um, you know, having these nest boxes spread out across your farm, uh, it, it, it's very, very inexpensive. It lasts for a long period of time and it, and it, it helps you to create an integrated pest management system that uh, I like to, to think of it as like, I've got like a security grid across my farm. Every kind of 200 feet, I've got these birdhouses spaced all across our farm. And I've got this like this web of, of employees that uh, monitor my animals and my crops uh, basically 24-7 uh, to, to keep any un unwanted uh, uh, species away from them. So uh, again, I hope this video helps and uh, we'll talk to you next time. Take care for now. Bye.